This is why Kai Havertz is one of Arsenal's most important players and why they don't need a striker like Ivan Toney. Waste of 65 million? That is laughable. Chelsea fans who labelled their former player a flop and claim they robbed Arsenal for the Havertz fee will be scrolling back and deleting their tweets. Yes, we've seen you lads. So let's start by looking at Arteta's style of play. Arsenal generally line up in a 4-3-3 formation and have done since the arrival of the likes of Declan Rice, Jorginho and Martin Odegaard. For a long time at Arsenal, Arteta played different formations based on what suited the players he had. But now he has his own players and this is his preferred setup. The fullbacks don't come inside as much as the likes of Man City or Spurs. It's a much more traditional setup. But quickly, it can become a more attacking formation with Rice and Odegaard pushing into the number 10 roles. Or equally, if they're under pressure, it can become a 4-2-3-1 with Rice dropping alongside Jorginho or Partey and Odegaard playing as a more traditional number 10. At Chelsea, Havertz was often deployed wide or as a number 10, which was also his position in Germany. Not to mention his versatility by playing left wing back for Germany as well. But when he signed, with Rice as the deepest midfielder, Havertz played to the left of the midfield three and struggled to impact games. But now he's moved to lead the line. He's flourished. Arsenal are now finding goals from all over the team. Four goals, five goals twice, six goals twice, all within two months of Havertz becoming the focal point of the attack. He's bringing in players all around him and they're chipping in with goals as well. So we're thinking Teddy Sheringham alongside Alan Shearer, Carlos Tevez with Sergio Aguero in the Man City title winning season. And also think Didier Drogba, who actually only scored 16 goals in his first season at Chelsea, but he was the post for others to play off with the likes of Frank Lampard bagging 20 goals. It's a bit unfair to call Havertz just a post. For a start, his movement is so good and so intelligent. Havertz basically averages a goal every three games in whatever position he plays in. 0.35 as a winger, 0.34 as an attacking midfielder, and 0.36 as a striker. So it's really his impact on others and how he gets the team to play that we should focus on. Again, doing the job that Arteta wants. So looking at Declan Rice, he has clearly been key to this formation this season, adding more goals and assists to show he's not just a holding midfield player. Gareth Southgate, take note. Rice is the driving force. He pushes the whole team forward because of the way other players trust him to mop up if they lose the ball. But the big change in how Arsenal are with Rice and Odegaard is how they're combining with Havertz. We know that Odegaard is the one who pulls the strings. He's the conductor of the Arteta Orchestra. But Havertz, yes, the £65 million flop, has been the one who has changed the game for Arteta. Not only finding the pockets of space to receive the ball, but creating for others. So, why is Havertz now so important? One important thing to note is that in the 23-24 season, Arsenal are right at the top of the table for set-piece goals, and that can be difficult to replicate going forward. But it's the brilliant tactics being used to nullify offside in that VAR world that is key to the way Arsenal are playing and they've set up. Without the ball, Arsenal have become masters at winning it back in transition and turning those positions into goal-scoring opportunities. And Havertz, in the number nine position at this point, is very, very important. Gabriel Jesus' decision-making is just not as good as Havertz. He runs and runs and runs, but often chases a ball, which means he's out of the game when the ball gets passed around him. Whereas Havertz leads the press. That means he knows when to go. He knows when he's got two or three people in support of him and when the holding midfielder and defence are set. If Havertz decides not to press, Arsenal will get back in their 4-3-3 shape. OK, it's all well and good without the ball, but Arsenal dominate possession. They are now a very, very good side, and clearly lots of teams come with a low block against them, trying to restrict the space outside of the area. Havertz starts up front, but he drifts into these pockets of space, and these pockets are between the edge of the D and the corner of the area. It's an uncertain area for defenders to be, should the centre-backs go out or should the full-backs stay in. Arsenal's plans are centred around getting the ball to the wide players, 
outside the corners of the area and creating the channels of space for Rice and Odegaard to play in or even run into themselves. And when you look at Bakaya Saka, Havertz's runs come across the face of defenders rather than in behind. And this is very important. By doing this, Havertz drags the defender with him. The first centre back he runs across may not be able to pass him on to the next man, but then that centre back has to track him. This does two things. A, it creates space for in behind for a runner and he becomes the man available for a one-two, or B, it drags a defence in one direction. So, in scenario A, as mentioned before, key in a VAR world, Saka is a brilliant one-two player, perhaps the best I've ever seen, something we'll cover in another video. I always said that Saka preferred to play with Eddie Nketiah than Gabriel Jesus because of this one-two, but now Havertz has taken that mantle. So to avoid offsides against teams who crowd the edge of the box, the cutback goals and crosses are key. And Arteta uses Havertz and Odegaard or Rice to create these opportunities. This is a pattern of play. It's drilled on the training ground. This is not just off the cuff on match day. Havertz comes across the second central defender. Ben White, the fullback, will look to go around the outside, which means the left back can't stay narrow. That opens up the space for Saka to play his one, two, through either off Odegaard or Havertz himself. The other thing Arsenal do very, very well is switch play quickly. Jorginho, another player who gets too much stick, can do this in one touch. And that means once the defence is dragged one way by Havertz, there could be an overload the other side. And that's when Havertz will get into the box to get on the end of the crosses as Martinelli is more likely than Saka to cut back and cross it to the back post. Often, by creating an overload at the near post, Arsenal will then hit across to the back post and head the ball back across goal. And that is all space created by Havertz, and Rice is often the one to exploit it. So we've mentioned Saka and Martinelli, and their goal and assist threat is huge. Their work rate's incredible, both in defence and attack, but Arsenal are brave in possession, and that can enable them to both get 1v1 with the defender, and then you just pray. Whereas Saka will suck a defender in looking for a 1-2 and then beating them if they get too tight, Martinelli is looking for a burst of pace and relies on a teammate overlapping or underlapping him to give him that space. But the key with both of these players now is how quickly they can be moving when they pass the ball. They're already on the run and because Havertz has become their pivot. So goals, assists, a perfect teammate. Waste of 65 million, not a chance. Yes, Arsenal don't have a Haaland or a poacher like an Aguero, but they score goals in different ways. Could they use an Ivan Tony? Perhaps, but he'd have to do all the other things that Havertz is currently doing.